We're going to finish up section 2.3 by taking a look at trigonometric and higher order derivatives. So we've already learned the derivatives of sine and cosine. And remember when I said, when you take the derivative of a co, it's going to be negative. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Secant and cosecant kind of go together because they're both going to have that same format. The derivative of secant of x is secant of x tangent of x, but the derivative of cosecant of x, remember that's a co, so it's negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. And then the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x, and the derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared x. Again, I would encourage you just to memorize these because it's going to be much more helpful than having to look them up all of the time. Now, I do have a couple of practice for us, and on purpose, I added some extra stuff in. So for instance, for f of x, notice that this is two functions. So this is a product rule question. So to find the derivative f prime of x, I'm going to need to do some work. So the product rule said take the first function times the derivative of the second function. So what's the derivative of secant of x? It's secant of x tangent of x. And then add to that the second function, secant of x, times the derivative of the first function. So what's the derivative of 4x? It's 4. Now, typically with questions like this, I'm going to have to do some simplification. So looking at this, I see that both functions have a 4 and both functions have a secant of x. So I'm actually going to take 4 secant of x out of each um, value. And that's going to leave me with x tangent of x and then plus secant of x times 4. I've already taken that out, so plus 1. So this is how I would rewrite that solution. Now, if I didn't rewrite it as, by factoring it out, I still should write it correctly. So 4x secant x tangent x plus 4 secant x. For my second function, I've got y equals tan x plus 7 cotangent of x. So y prime, this is not product rule. It's not quotient rule. It's just product, I mean, sorry, the sum or difference. So tangent of x is just secant squared x. And then 7 cotangent of x would be 7, and then cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. So minus cosecant, oh, shoot, cosecant squared x. And I would leave it just like that. Now let's find some higher order derivatives. So I'm gonna go back to our position function and finding the derivative gave us the velocity function, which was the rate of change of position. But what if I found the rate of change of the velocity? Well, the rate of change of our velocity will actually give us acceleration. So how quickly is velocity changing? So S of t is our position function s prime of t is v of t or velocity s double prime so that's the second derivative of the position function is actually the derivative of the velocity function which is the acceleration function so let's take a look at how to use the uh, second derivative or the acceleration function and of course i could just find the acceleration but this question says that they want us to find the ratio of the Earth's gravitational force to the moon's. So the moon has no atmosphere and a falling object on the moon encounters no air resistance. In 1971, David Scott demonstrated that a feather and a hammer fall at the same rate on the moon. And then the position function is given. So here is my position function. And we are now being asked to compare the Earth's gravitational force, which is an acceleration, acceleration due to gravity, to the moons. So we're trying to find the ratio of the Earth's gravitational force to the moons. So that means I need to find 
the moon's gravitational force. So S of t is the position function, negative 0 0.81 t squared plus 2. This is position. I'm going to find S prime of t, which would be the same as V of t. And that would be using the power rule, 2 times negative 0.81, so negative 1.62 t, and then the derivative of 2 is 0. So this is the velocity function. And if I take the second derivative of s, which is the derivative of negative 1.62t, I get negative 1.62. So negative 1.62 is the acceleration due to gravity. So this is the value that I'm going to use compared to the negative 9.8. Now the question says, what's the ratio? So ratio means fraction of the Earth's gravitational force negative 9.8 meters per second squared to the moon's, which is negative 1.62 meters per second squared. So essentially, they're just asking me to divide that. So I get 6.05, or the ratio of the Earth is about uh, six times that of the moon. So the gravitational force on the Earth is about six times the gravitational force of the moon. To finish up this video, I wanted to take a look at the graphs of a function, its derivative, and its second derivative so that we can understand exactly what we might be looking for. So first of all, one thing that you can do when you're looking at a question like this is to identify the type of each graph. For instance, this green graph this is a line. So this function is going to be something like f of x is equal to some constant or some slope times x. And I don't care what the slope is. This is just a linear function. So I'm just going to put x and I'm going to put linear. Well, the blue function is a quadratic. So it's some sort of quadratic function or an x squared function where the highest degree is 2. This red function, hopefully we know that that is a cubic function. So the highest degree is 3. So without knowing anything else, I can very quickly determine which one is which and why. Because if I take the derivative of a cubic function, using the power rule, that's going to give me a quadratic function. If I take the derivative of a quadratic function using the power rule, that's going to give me a linear function. So without doing anything else, I can tell you very clearly that this function is f of x, that the derivative of a cubic function would be a quadratic function, which means this has to be f prime of x. And the last one, which is the linear function, would be the derivative of a quadratic. So that has to be f double prime of x. And that's really the easiest way to go about this question. Now, when you have other things going on, when you've got um, more uh, humps and valleys, then it's easier to determine where the zeros on the graph would be. But for here, really, we're just looking at what is the degree of each graph. Coming up next, we're going to look at the chain rule, which in my opinion is one of the most important differentiation rules.